when thinking about the inspiration for any project just as an artist, of course there are certain things that I am looking to offer and explore and expand upon as a singer. I am singing about a revolution. And really it comes down to just the messages of the material. Musically, what do the words share? What are they communicating? Um, on another level, just as a human being, what am I looking to share? What am I looking to communicate? And in many ways, I do feel that that is the inspiration for this project, History's Persistent Voice. Several years ago, the composer Jesse Montgomery and I started going through this anthology that was released just after the Civil War. These educators and musicologists went all across the United States to newly freed communities of people who had been enslaved and transcribed 136 lyrics and melodies along with notes on performance practice and stories about when these pieces were performed, under what context they were performed. Some of them at times of rebellion, others were during spiritual church services, others just out in the fields while people were working. This was the first project where we deliberately centered our identity within what we were doing. That was what I think made it so special and made it like really about how we connected together and how we connected with this material together. And very important, I think, for both of us, just as people um, and, and as artists. My work is a five-movement uh, piece, a five-movement cycle um, that is directly linked to specific songs within the anthology. We, we came to mostly songs that have uh, both share that expression of, of pain and um, of oppression, but also the desires for change, the aspirations for better life, um, the, um, the acknowledgement of the situation these enslaved people were in at the time, but then the, you know, then the, co the collective wish, the collective need to, to break away from that. With all of those themes of inspiration and aspiration and seeking one's own liberation through creative endeavors, I needed to find the composers that I, f I felt could <laughs> represent this incredible diversity of voices and of experience. And they include Jesse Montgomery, Tanya Leon, Alison Logans Hall, Carolyn Yarnell, and Pamela Z. Yeah, it's just an incredible group of black women who are also composers, who are tremendous musicians. It kind of maybe pushed me in a direction of thinking about subject matter that I don't normally think about when I compose music. One of the links that Julia had sent was to a film about these women who had a, had a long tradition of quilting and when I watched that film, it just jumped out at me that their voices, to me, were just so musical and so, like, engaging. And I wanted to use fragments of those voices. And a lot of the melodic and rhythmic motifs that are in the piece were taken directly from the melodies and rhythms that are in the speech sounds from these women. And I excited about the prospect of hearing this work in Julia's voice. Within this piece, there are world premieres, there are West Coast premieres, and also a new visual art um, that is being made by Ahana Kim. So Juliana and I, we wanted to like have an immersive environment for these like songs to come alive, like, both sonically and visually. What well, was important to us to have it like not a singular screen, something that is like a little bit more fragmented and scattered throughout the space. So it still have this like big immersive feeling, um, yet it feels like very close to us at the same time. I work with mixed media. So depending on the project, sometimes I lean more heavily to the digital process 
or something that is more tangible and more analog or handmade. For this project, I want it to be organic as much as possible. Each song is very different and each individual piece embodies like different walks of life. I'm trying to capture that emotional journey through each individual song. My through line is to try to embody the human experience as much as possible. After going through all of these songs, which, yes, acknowledge the violence and the trauma and the oppression that was very much a reality at that time, what was deeply inspiring for me to read and also to vocalize is an affirmation of life. I just hope in San Francisco it will be this amazing moment of arrival for this project, which also will continue to have a life beyond it. Because with every new place that this piece is going to be performed, there is a new commission that accompanies it. I think it very much reflects um, how the piece came into existence and also then where it's going to go.